Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating a full 3D path from a rather specialized 2D situation, namely a bouncing ball in this 96 frame per second shot. So the lesson here isn't so much about this particular task, but how you can use hybrid geometric hierarchy tracking to accomplish some kind of interesting and useful things. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to be using supervised tracking, some single frame alignment, and hybrid geometric hierarchy tracking. So our first step is going to be to do the supervised tracking of the ball. And we'll start out just adjusting its size. We want to keep the tracker pretty small so that we don't get too much in the way of background because any background that's seen is going to you know, affect the tracking. And it's going to do that anyway, but we just want to minimize that. So I'm going to go to the end of the shot, hold down the Z key, and drop the tracker into the right location there also. And now, again, adjust the size of the ball. So now I just have an animated size track set up so that the size will be increasing steadily over the length of the shot. So now we're ready to start tracking. I'm going to use the middle mouse scroll wheel to move forward through the shot. And it's then predicting where the ball is going to be. From time to time as we move ahead, we're going to just tweak things just a little tiny bit to compensate for changes in the background and size and marks on the ball and whatnot. And then when we come to the net, we again need to make sure that it stays nicely centered up. Then it comes down to the bounce. And then because it is predicting where the ball is going to be next, it's rather surprised by the bounce. So you just need to keep adjusting that. I'll actually just make the search region a bit bigger in the vertical direction because now it is moving faster vertically also. We'll just keep an eye on it as it goes through the region with the various other lines behind it. So, you know, this just takes a little time to run through and make sure it comes out reasonably. Again, we have another bounce. You can really see some of the seams going by. And we get to the end of the shot. Now, each time I, you know, keyed the, the tracker, I, I was introducing a small, you know, jump in the path of the tracker. So actually we're going to go and turn on a little key smoothing, which, which does tracking both in the forwards direction and backwards direction and averages them out so that you have smoother transitions right at those keys. And that, that can introduce some additional jumps, so I'm just running through that again, watching out for that to happen and making sure that it stays on course the entire way. Let's 
looking pretty good. And now we've got our ball's path. So as always, when you're done supervised tracking of any particular tracker, you should lock it up. That way you don't inadvertently mess it up. And also if you have 10 or 20 of them that are unlocked, and that can start to burn off some CPU time as you're playing through a shot, so you don't want to be doing that either. So that's our first phase. Now let's move on to the alignment of the camera. And by default, the camera is just kind of looking straight ahead. We want to get it oriented in the right direction with respect to the ground plane of this tennis court. So I'm going to do that by setting up a bunch of lines These lines are all parallel to the y-axis that I want. I'm also going to use this one as the actual y-axis and give it a length. I give it a length of 20. You can call it 20 feet if you like. I don't know what the real measurement is, but it doesn't matter in exact detail. Again, we've got the y-axis, and the other direction here will be our x-axis. And this is going to be the actual x-axis. So the intersection of these two axes right here is the origin. So let's go to the quad view. And we're going to actually run the alignment process. And that has now adjusted the camera position to match up with what we asked for. Just to show that that's happened, let's create a box right at the origin. And you can see over in the camera view how that's lined up as described. So I'll just delete that. So now we've got the alignment that we wanted to have for the ground plane. So the next phase is to create some extra points right at the bounce points. So these are just little little helper points and I'm going to put it right at the bottom where the tennis court meets the ball. I do the one at the one bounce, and I come ahead to the other bounce. So if we look at this in a top view, the ball came and passed through those two points. And it's not moving side to side. So it actually stayed in the plane through those two points, a vertical plane through those two points. So we can go and create that actual plane. So let's go and create a plane. I'm just going to line up the bottom corner of it with the ground plane. And you, know, you can see it now along that one coordinate axis plane. I'm going to hit W to switch to moving mode. I'm going to move the plane to line up with the one extra point. I'm going to go over to the 3D panel. I'm going to hit the selection lock and go to the rotate tool. I'm going to just start rotating right over that one extra point. And I'm going to do that until I get it to line up with the other extra point. So now I've got a plane that passes through those two extra points. And literally the trajectory of the ball is taking place in that particular plane. So that next phase is going to be to get the ball to be moving literally in 3D in that plane. To start out to do that, I'm going to go to the coordinates panel, select our tracker, and make it be a lock point. 
So I want this supervised tracker to be literally describing the exact center of the moving object. If I have a moving object that's got a bunch of trackers on it, they might all be located in different positions that I generated by putting them on the surface of a reference mesh. But here it's just a ball. There's only really one point of interest right at the middle. So I've said that's where our tracker should go. So now we're going to go to the geometric hierarchy panel and start setting up the geometric hierarchy tracking. To do that, let's bring up the toolbar. We'll go to creation mode. I'm going to hold down the shift key and create an initial object. And this object is now aligned with that plane. And the whole point of this plane really is just to, to set up the uh, orientation of this geometric hierarchy object. At this point I could delete the plane if, if I wanted, but there's really no, no need for that. The next object that I'm going to create, I'm going to hold down shift again, click on our mesh. Here's our second object. It's now a child of the first one. And this is going to be the one that's the ball. So to get it to move along with the ball, we're going to start by taking the tracker and dragging it to the object. But I'm going to do one little trick, which is right when I get to the object, I'm going to hold down the shift key and then release. Because I want the tracker's lock coordinates to stay unchanged by this process. I want them to stay at 0, 0, 0. Normally when you reparent something in the hierarchy view, it, keep, it it's done in such a way that the object remains at the same location in the overall world coordinate space. In this particular case, I wanted those coordinates to stay at 0, 0, 0 so that I could get this, where the tracker is right at the middle of the ball or in this case will be. So with that reparenting done, I can now start unlocking the particular joints. And let's see, we want to see what we've got. So this depends on the axes of the object that we've set up. So the ones that we're, we've got set up are X and Z. And the last thing that we need to do is this key channel up here is used for image-based geometric hierarchy tracking. Here we've got a hybrid geometric hierarchy tracky, tracking. It's, it's not using the image itself at all. It's operating based on the supervised tracker. So you don't need to key this at all. We'll just undo it. You know, undo it. We'll just turn it back off. And now the geometric hierarchy object has gone and jumped off to the location of the, uh, the ball. It's up there right at the very corner. So now if I go and start tracking ahead, you see the path of the ball now being revealed. And in fact, I can just go click play and have it run through the entire thing. And ta-da. And that process is really based on the just the tracking data rather than on uh, image-based analysis. The object one actually causes a little extra time delay there because it doesn't have any supervised trackers on it. So it does take a little more time. But as you see, the result of this whole process is the ball moving in 3D in the surface of this plane. So now we have an actual literal 3D path for the ball 
just from really basically very limited set of information. You can go and turn off our, uh, our plane, hide that, makes it a little clearer. So, hopefully this gives you a little food for thought as to some of the things that you can do. When you see a situation, you say, well, I, I really understand what's happening and what the geometry is. And I, it should be possible to pull that information out of the scene. Hopefully now you see that the geometric hierarchy tracking is a way to help you do that. That if you can figure that the system the right way to take advantage of what you know, what you can see, you can actually get that information back, even if it wouldn't be traditionally available. So, hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching.